Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here an Amazon Kindle Fire, which is a tablet with a 7-inch display uh, that Amazon sells for about $200. And the uh, idea is that you can use it to access books, music, movies, and applications purchased from uh, Amazon. And in terms of applications, there's an app store with about 20,000 applications. makes it very easy to download apps and uh, access them on any devices that you may have that also run the Amazon App Store, be that another tablet or a phone. Um, so it's a pretty good experience, but there are a lot of apps that aren't available here. 20,000 apps versus hundreds of thousands of applications that are available in the official Android market. And as it turns out, it's not that hard to get the official Android market up and running on this tablet. Um, it's, it is just hard enough that I'm not going to go into all the details here, but you um, basically, it's fairly easy to install third-party applications that are not available from the Amazon App Store on this tablet. Uh, the Android market is the exception to the rule. You have to root the device, which is the equivalent of jailbreaking it, in order to uh, uh, change some settings to let the Android market work. Um, and once you root your device, the Amazon Instant Video Streaming Service will not work. But once you've installed the Android market, you can uh, unroot your device, reboot your device, and then streaming video works again. And the Android market still works as well. So, uh, first let me show you real quick how to install apps from unknown sources. You just go into the settings, click devices, and there's an option here, just toggle it to make sure that it's on, and you can install apps from unknown sources. And what that'll let you do is download applications from the internet, uh, tap on them in a file browser or from the download manager and install them or you can copy, device, uh, copy files uh, via a USB connection. Just plug this in via the USB port to your computer and um, use a file browser to install. Now, in addition to the Android market, uh, without rooting your device at all, you can install a number of different apps, such as this, file or this uh, application launcher called Go Launcher X, which gives you something more uh, traditionally Android. You can install a file browser, which comes in handy when you want to install applications. So, where did my file browser go? Uh, it's in here somewhere. Ah, there it is. So you can navigate through and tap on an application to install it. Uh, but let's take a quick look at the Android market and see what you can do there. We can uh, search for applications or browse applications. Not every application that's available in the Android market is actually available on this version, and uh, that's something that I've seen happen with a number of other tablets in the past. Um, it's probably not a deal breaker. You still get access to a lot more applications than you would get just using Amazon services, but um, it might take a little while for hackers to figure out how to enable missing applications to show up properly. Um, still, considering this thing has just been available for a couple of days, it's pretty impressive that uh, people have already figured out how to root it, how to install the Android market, how to sideload applications, how to do a lot of really interesting things, such as run the Barnes & Noble Nook application on the Amazon Kindle Fire, which is kind of funny because you can also run the Amazon Kindle application on the Barnes & Noble Nook. So there you go. We've got uh, two, two tablets that have a little bit of a personality crisis, um, but what it really shows is that even though each of these are sort of purpose-built devices uh, meant for accessing Amazon services or Barnes & Noble services, under the hood they're, they're essentially running Android, which is a uh, fairly powerful and versatile operating system, and it lets you do all sorts of things. So you can buy an Amazon Kindle, and it doesn't mean that you can't read Barnes & Noble books. You can buy a Barnes & Noble tablet, and it doesn't mean that you can't use Amazon services. I uh, haven't figured out yet how to get the uh, Android market working on the Nook, but it might, uh, it's probably just a matter of time, given the, uh, the interest in doing so. And we have already figured out how to get the Amazon App Store. So um, Barnes & Noble offers you know, dozens of apps, uh, maybe, maybe hundreds of apps in their application store for the uh, Nook tablet, uh, compared with 20,000 for the Amazon App Store. So now boom, we've got the Amazon apps on the Nook. Um, and then Android Market has hundreds of thousands of apps, and many of those are now available on the Amazon Kindle Fire. Uh, $200 tablet, $250 tablet. This one's, uh, they both have the same processor, same uh, basic screen, although the uh, Barnes & Noble says that their viewing angles are a little bit better. Uh, this one has one gig of RAM versus 
512 12 megabytes of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, but most of it is actually reserved for Barnes & Noble downloaded content, but there is an SD card slot, no SD card slot, and 8 gigabytes of storage, about 6.5 gigabytes of which you can do what you want with. So anyways, there's a quick look at these two tablets, which have already, within a couple of days, have been really been um, tweaked to be a little bit more powerful for power users. Um, even if that isn't necessarily the intended art, uh, audience for these devices. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.